for Mr. Pierce. You've now um, finished your first term here on the Board of Selectmen. W what accomplishments have you made um, that should prove to the voters that they should reelect you? Well, thank you for being here tonight, you and uh, Patrick and the paper for putting on this debate, and thanks to you, Mr. Casasa, for being the moderator. <coughs> uh, I think that looking back on my term, uh, as I even said in the newspaper the other day in the response to some other remarks that other people have made, that we've come quite a ways. We built a beach fire station. That started my first year. We finished that in 2013. That had needed to be done for probably 40 or 50 years. The uptown station was a compromise on my part. I didn't want to do much to it, but a compromise in order to get the beach fire station done. We did some improvements to the uptown station. And also, more importantly, we started the pumping station when I first was elected to get it replaced because, as you know, if the pumping station shuts down, the beach shuts down, literally. And one other thing that we accomplished my first year, all the co union contracts except one. So my last year in 2013, all of them are on the ballot. So I think we've moved ahead considerably considering some of those things haven't been done for years, in some cases decades. So I think this board has had the intestinal fortitude to do what a lot of boards prior to me being on that board had the enthusiasm to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Question for everyone, and this could be a yes and a no. Um, what is your position on the petition warrant article which calls for the town to stop picking up commercial trash? Mr. Pierce. I am definitely against that petition warrant article, 100% think of Mr. Moore's assessment at that time and, and why did you support a motion to oust uh, Mr. Bean as the chairman? Up on the question you asked earlier just a little bit, I get very emotional about looking out for the taxpayer's interest. I'll admit that. That is my reason <coughs> for being here, looking out for all the taxpayers. So when we don't have an agreement on an issue, I get emotional about that. That's one of my, probably one of my character faults. I get enthused. I get vigorous. And I do get emotional. I have no problem admitting that. However, I think it's important to make my position well known how I feel about everything as a selectman. And I enjoy good, healthy discussions. Some of the members on the board now, and I'll name one that I've known for a long time, Mary Louise Wolsey. She and I can disagree on the time of day, and we can walk away and still have a conversation. Even though some people might think we fight all the time at the board, we do because we're trying to press our points. We want this, I want my, the other board members to stand up and tell me how they really feel. I don't want them just holding the chair down. If they're just holding the chair down, they don't belong on the board of selectmen, okay? I've worked with... Eileen Latimer, I've worked with a lot of people in town, and sometimes the conversations have been very emotional. I have no problem admitting that right up front. However, at the end of the day, I always take away something from that. I learned something. So in answering your question about the situation with Ben resigning, that was his choice. He didn't like what we did. We thought there was a change that should have been made, and I have no problem with exactly what happened. And his comments after the fact, He's entitled his opinion, like everybody is in this country, free country the last time I checked. I definitely have my opinions. I have no problem saying how I feel about them, and I'll stand on that. Thank you. Incumbents, um, do you feel the board has been on a good course, and where do, you where do you envision it going over the next year? Do I think we've been on a good course? Well, I think uh, the record speaks for itself since I've been on the board, and, and Prior to that, too, also the tax rate's been pretty stable. I think that's a good thing for the businesses and the residents of the town. We've got contracts that we've got to bring forward to the ballot. I think we've done pretty well this year in relation to our record. I think it pretty well speaks for itself. And I think we have a, a very good uh, membership on the board that can really discuss things and toss things around vigorously. And we've come up with some pretty good decisions, I think, at the end of the day. We don't always agree, which I think is normal when you have five people who think for themselves. Okay, and make sure you understand that part. But looking forward, I think one of the biggest issues we have is, like it's already been mentioned here uh, this evening, is the roads. We've already started the process of looking at the inner part of Exeter Road. As everybody knows, it's falling apart just west of downtown pretty bad. The problem with doing the surface 
if you read pave it, you need to do the plumbing underneath because otherwise you'd be tearing it all apart to fix the plumbing. So we're looking at what we can do with the plumbing, the sewage drains and, and uh, storm drains and so forth. And then once we get past that challenge, we'll do the surface. Well, also coming into play about the same time <laughs> as looking at the downtown to make it more people friendly. And I, as I mentioned yesterday, the day before when we had this meeting at the galley hatch about what are we going to do with the downtown to make it more people friendly and parking friendly, I said, well, when we do the extra road, that's going to be a very expensive proposition, probably two or three million dollars, just guessing, okay? So when we're doing that, we might take into consideration what we want to do with the downtown area to make it more people friendly. And I think that looking forward, some of the ideas that were brought forth by this advisory committee looking at the downtown area were really good ideas. And I think there's a lot there that can be done. And I'd be willing to jump on that, not as a selectman, but as a taxpayer, regardless, like I did on the advisory committee, to have that downtown looked at to make it more people friendly. Thank you. Very much. Brief answers, and I just uh, the Massachusetts U.S. senators and six of its eleven U.S. representatives uh, recently sent a letter to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission recommending that basically the, the license um, for Seabrook Station not be renewed into um, they deal with their concrete degradation problem. Is this an issue that Hampton should get involved in? Oh, I think we should definitely pay attention to what the uh, regulatory commission says. If there's a problem with the concrete, I think we all want to make sure we go err on the side of safety. So I have no problem with us paying close attention to that. Good question. Uh, yes. Now that the old courthouse and old town hall has been torn down, uh, what would you like to see that land used for? I think the first consideration in my mind is looking what they want to do with the academy. The academy has been on the burner now for a while, and I think they're going to probably end up spending some serious money on that. And if they decide to remodel or whatever, expand in that area, that might absorb some of that line, land where the courthouse was. Putting that aside, I think that um, the next priority for the next board would be looking at the roads and, and the infrastructure rather than looking at how we can spend money on an open piece of land that I think looks pretty good there with nothing on it for a change or the no doubt dilapidated building. So I think that I like open space. Being from Kansas, there's nothing wrong with a little open space. Okay? Thank you. Um, would you support a ballot initiative to allow bars in Hampton to push back last call from 1 a.m. to 2 a.m.? Uh, Mr. Pierce. I'm not in favor of supporting that at all, and I think that looking at the beach alone, and I don't like to separate the beach from the town, but looking at the beach and the people we're trying to attract, I don't think we want people staying up all night raising help. Sure, so I'm going to ask each of the candidates to, if they, if they would like, um, give us some closing remarks, a minute or two, uh, about why they're running, why they would like to be elected um, as, a, uh, as a selectman to the Board of Selectmen. I have enjoyed being on the Board of Selectmen for the last three years. It's been a challenge because I'm uh, very vocal. I have my own opinions about most things, and I'll take full responsibility for being emotional and causing some disturbance once in a while. However, when I'm looking out for the taxpayers of Hampton, Nothing else matters. They come first to my mind. I think we did a pretty good job in the last three years, and I'm not saying they didn't do wonderful things before. However, the board that I served on in the last three years, regardless who was there, had the intestinal fortitude to move on the beach fire station. They did not move on that for over 40 or 50 years. It needed to be done. And secondly, the contracts six years before we got them done the first year I was there. This year we have them all on the ballot. So even though we fuss and fight a lot, we get the job done. People don't like the style. I didn't say I was perfect when I ran the first time. I'm not saying I'm perfect this time. I don't claim to be perfect. But I'll tell you what, I do my homework. I don't just hold the chair down. I get in here and I raise hell about things. People don't like it, they can take it to the bank. Okay? I, but I will represent all the taxpayers, period. Not any particular group, and so on and so forth. I will promise I will do that to my best of my ability. Thank you.